Okay, after trying to fit everything in the modulation generator, envelope generator, and mod section all into one video, I realized it's simply too much to cover. So if I want to keep this around 10 minutes, we're just going to have to go with one thing at a time. For this video, I'm going to focus on the modulation generator. Then I'll focus on the envelopes and finally the external modulation and mixers in the last video. So we have a blank patch. Let me just make sure that this is a blank patch, which it's not until I have the attack time. And let me open the filter and turn down resonance. All right, blank patch. So the first thing I want to talk about is voice allocation. This is not choosing the envelope for the VCA. What this is doing is telling the Kronos when to stop all processes in a voice. So if I choose envelope generator one as my voice allocation envelope, it's using the release time of envelope generator one to eliminate all resources for that played voice. If I turn up the attack of envelope generator two, we will hear the amp swell from the lengthened attack time. And if I turn up the release time of envelope generator two, we hear the sound cut out and not go through envelope generator's two release time. That's because the release time of envelope generator one is telling the Kronos to stop all processes on this voice. Generally, you're gonna to wanna to leave this on envelope generator two because when this envelope closes, you don't have any sound anymore anyway, and so the Kronos knows to release all of the resources that are going into that voice. Why this option exists in the first place is kind of a mystery to me. The manual says that because there are multiple ways to control amplitude, it lets you choose multiple envelopes to tell the Kronos when to not use a voice, but there are multiple ways to control amplitude in mod seven, but mod seven doesn't have a voice allocation envelope specification feature. So it's kind of strange. Maybe when I study it in the future, I'll know more about it. But for now, let's just move on to the next section. So we have the modulation generator right here. That's basically an LFO. There's a lot of cool stuff that's going on with this. So first thing I want to do, starting from the top, is just show you what Keysync does. Um, before I can go into that, I guess I do have to explain that we have our square wave and our triangle wave. And by default, the triangle waveform is going to be what's connected to these knobs. So you can see MG stands for modulation generator. We have one patch into pitch, cut off of the high pass filter, cut off of the low pass filter. If I add some intensity of the modulation generator, it's going to turn up the triangle wave. It actually sounds a lot like a, uh, let's take down the release time and take down the attack time. It actually sounds a lot like a sine wave. So it's a pretty smooth triangle waveform. I'm going to change it to a saw down. So by turning this knob, You could hear it kind of morph into that triangle waveform. If we had a kind of triangle, we'll hear like a kind of an attack at the beginning of the waveform versus just a straight saw down. So what this key sync parameter does right here is it makes it so every time I hit a note, the LFO starts. So it'll be at phase zero every time I hit a key. If I don't have key sync on, the LFO will be free running. So every time I hit a key, it'll still be going through this cycle of the LFO. So that's kind of neat. If we go to tempo sync, it lets us choose a note division to sync to. Right now I'm at 120 BPM, and this is going to be a quarter note. And it makes the frequency time parameter change into a uh, division, which is just like the regular LFOs that you find elsewhere in the Kronos. It's kind of nice that they add this on the regular modulation generator in the MS-20 because the regular MS-20 doesn't have this option. 
Now, if I turn this down, it'll multiply it by two or three, or of course, four for a whole bar. And if we wanted key sync on. So that's neat. I'm going to take off tempo sync. I'm actually going to take off key sync too. Let's go to a triangle wave and let's go to the patch panel real fast. Now, if you did want to use a square wave as that modulation generator um, intensity, then you simply patch it into the total. And then this knob now controls the total external modulation and that we are, we've fed it with that square wave. So when we turn this knob up, we'll get the regular up down of a square wave. Of course, uh, increasing intensity as we go up. And you can hear that's unipolar actually. So that's really neat. That, that really helps with, uh, if you wanted to like, make a whole sequence and then like with the uh like with the common step sequencer uh if you made a whole sequence you could then transpose that sequence by like a fifth with the square wave and have that happen like every other bar um i'm not going to go through a patch like that in this video but you could you know maybe want to explore that on your own time uh let's take that all the way down and let's go back to the patch panel so here's something that's super duper neat. The MS-20 is modular, and we can take the output of this square LFO and patch it into the input of the VCA. So an output can actually go into any amount of input jacks, as you can see here. But an input jack can only take uh, one source or one the output of, of one thing. And that doesn't matter whether it has something that's hard patched into it or not. So this is not taking the sum of whatever's passing through the low pass filter. It's only taking what it, we're plugging into it. So let me just disconnect all, double click this, go in there, come on. And I'll, I'll explain that again and just explain the whole signal path of the patch panel when I make that video. So we have this, uh, this square low frequency oscillator now going into the input of the VCA, which is then, you know, turning up its amplitude and sending it to the signal out. So let's go to the, this waveform. And when we hit a note, it just sounds like a bit of popping. Let's turn up the frequency. So the frequency can actually go fast enough to where we can hear it. I'm not sure what Hertz value it's at right at this moment, but it's in the audible range, which is kind of nice. If we were to patch uh, something else, like a triangle wave, we hear the, the timbre difference between the square and the triangle. Now, something that's pretty neat, let's go back here and go to the frequency. I have my common LFO at a stopped square wave at the moment. And the reason I have it like that is because I just want to send a full amplitude intensity. It's just like having an envelope with full sustain and no attack. Uh, and so when we set this intensity, it's just going to be boosting this frequency. Uh, so we have it on the triangle waveform at the moment. Actually, let's make that a perfect five. So it's just a triangle. And now when we turn up the intensity of the frequency, boosted by this common LFO. You can hear it sounds like a sub oscillator. I'm not sure if you can actually key track the frequency of the LFO. You can probably do it because the Kronos is pretty sophisticated as far as its key tracking options go. Um, I know I did manage to make a, a key tracked LFO in the uh, to be in equal temperament with uh, the LFOs in AL1 or just the generic LFOs found elsewhere, including in the MS-20X. Um, but these are kind of different than the generic LFOs. These are specific to the MS-20. The fact that it lets you boost via an AMS source at all is really neat. Um, so anyway, let's go back to the patch panel and actually patch that square wave into the VCA input. 
and we can do, you can probably already guess, we can do pulse width modulation. The difference here though, from the regular pulse width modulation found in the oscillators, is that this pulse width modulation can only go, uh, can only have a pulse width modulation in the upward direction. Whereas this one, you can go up and down, just like an AL1. So the MS-20 is truly modular in that regard where you can take basically anything and patch it anywhere. It's really neat. So I believe that's all that I want to cover in this video. Like I said, next time I'll go over the envelopes and their idiosyncrasies and then the uh, external modulation in the mixer sections. So stay tuned for that one.